What's up everybody? This is uh, Riley with your next tutorial on Tech Tyro. Today I'm going to go over a little bit about uh, formatting and posters. I'm just going to use a couple examples of work I have done in the past and explain a little bit of how I feel about posters. Um, with posters, they can be informative, they can be just for design, or they can they can really display as, as many things as you want it to be as long as it's properly positioned or uh, like laid out for the viewer so one example would be this is uh, an informative poster on the top it has your information in the middle it has the event name on the bottom it has the participants or the sponsors um, for something like this this is another <clears throat> example of the falling down kind of information. You don't want it to be too cramped though, and this isn't my best example, but it has the name up top, it has the information in the body, and then at the bottom it has where it's going to be, as well as the participants, so University of Lethbridge here. Um, back to my albums, I'll show you this guy. This is a poster I did uh, earlier this year for an art gallery and uh, this poster it has the the main graphics in the middle it's very embellished I did a lot of work on this one but um, there's specific locations for the information so it can tell the viewer what it's about and it's it has a, a rubric so top part is what it's about middle part is the title and then the information is at the bottom and it shows off what it's about um, this one, this is uh, just a design. It's, uh, it's strictly, it's not telling the viewer anything that's uh, like an alarming date or informing them about an upcoming event. This is just a, a, a way I use to broadcast a design and it's really just centered and uh, shows off my work as a design poster. So. Um, it's really it sticks around the middle point here and it's not off to the edges I that's kind of my design style but it's always up to your personal preference as well um, main area and then the the edges just kind of like fall off and then you don't have to worry about when you print it uh, if the edges are gonna cut some of your design unless that's what you want it to be is a like a fall off the page kind of design this one uh, allowed me to print it and then uh, take into account the printing uh, like cutoff area which is usually just uh, 0.5 of your margin off to the side um, and I will I will explain that as well and going down there's another poster I want to show off these guys another example of my design uh, I did a minimalism uh, series of pictures and they all had a same theme. It was a main graphic and then just a title underneath and when they were showed in a series they kind of sent a message with each other. So strict just graphic and then maybe a point at the bottom. But it's really up to you. I mean this could be a poster depending on how you present it and it doesn't have to have any words. Or, like, this guy could be a poster. Oh, this is a poster. But main graphic, title, points. And this is uh, the same idea with the fall off. Like, those are probably we're implying that they go on forever, so if they are cut off, it doesn't matter. Um, going into our design palette here, this is another example of an element that I want to use for a poster, and so. What I did was I, I drew the base image, and then I, I saved it, I added it in Photoshop, and then uh, gave it just a little bit of a background, did a quick touch or something. But what I could do with this graphic is, uh, since I have it just uh, as is, I can take it and I can put it on anything. I can put it on posters, I can put it on uh, Facebook pictures, I can share it that way, I can incorporate it in different uh, elements anywhere really, I can repeat it. And so since I have the isolated graphic as a, a static image, I can re reuse it as many times as I want to. Right now, I pulled it off Facebook. So the, I'm kind of 
uh, restricted to just using <clears throat> this image with the the whole gradient and everything in the background. Um, setting up for a poster, if you wanted to do a design poster, I encourage you to set up your template as as you would uh, for designing a poster. I, I usually work in inches, uh, eight and a half by eleven. <clears throat> That's the usual paper size. Uh, we're gonna look for 11 by 17 though. That's the usual poster format. And when that comes up, everything's uh, adjusted and you have uh, 300 DPI, uh, eight and a half by 11, no, oh, 11 by 17 poster presentation. And we're also gonna look at our rulers. This is important too because it tells you what the uh, the alignment is. And so when I mentioned that uh, whole poster cutoff part, this is where it comes into play. We're gonna drag just here. This is the 0.5 part I was talking about, and we're gonna also put it over here, and then same with the top. So now we have our margins set, and we know where it, when it prints, where it's going to cut it off. Um, next, uh, you can give it like its base image. So now, when you set it up in Illustrator, and you um, take it into Photoshop, it's not going to cut it. Uh, what Photoshop does when you bring an image into Photoshop is it takes into account the negative space and crops it accordingly so there's not this huge empty area with your designs. Now give this guy some color. Bam. Just white. So now if I drag this over it's going to bring the whole 11 by 17 format. It's not going to bring in the rulers but we're going to design in here and then it's uh, we already have in mind where the cutoff is going to be and depending on what we want to put into it it's going to work it out so um, mostly I'm not going to do any drawing today because you guys know all how to draw uh, I am going to show you however uh, how to adjust areas so for this guy if it wanted to be a poster We've got the, the main graphic, the title, and then if we wanted to, we could also add information below. I wouldn't necessarily say information above. I would even put this title on the top, so that's the first kind of presence. As is right now, it, it reads well because it's in a, a box format and for sharing that way. And the first thing that you want the viewer to see from a top-down perspective is the pumpkin and then the information and what is ever linked to this as a description would be what the uh, read up on and get informed about Hello Scream or whatever's going on. Uh, this way we're gonna now look at it as uh, we'll just try to erase this from our memory here. This bottom piece we won't even pay attention to it. So we've got our uh, pumpkin now. We're going to lock the background. So that was a control 2. Hold shift when you drag it. It keeps it in the right format. We've got the edges taken care of and actually I'll unlock the background and we'll give it a gradient. So click on here, it automatically puts in a gradient. We will open this guy up for colors, and I want to memorize what this color is going to be. Nope, we want the eyedropper. This color is going to go right there. This color is black. So drag that off. We got this, and. 
we want to assign this color as follows. So that's a pretty cool look or approach. We'll just try this out, see how it goes. But for the most part, working out a gradient on here is going to be difficult just because there's already a gradient. We can tweak this guy. This will rotate. Um, probably want to have the black part closer. And also because this was a gradient that was set up in RGB, the uh, the coping for CMYK is leaving it in a gray space, and so that's kind of throwing it off as well. Um, we will go to here, give this proper gradient as well, tweak this part so it's all the way up here. So it's never going to be quite on, on par with it because it is a different shade. And as we can see too, when you work between gradients, uh, it's hard to adjust for the exact length of it. And this is all the speculation on it right now. You don't necessarily want to use this as a practice unless you're making something that is going to look distorted and glitchy and kind of like that's the look you're going for. But um, just for right now, we'll lock all these spaces. And so grab our, our text and we want to make this hello scream. Um, and this is going to be like our title. This will sit at the top. We uh, probably want to change the color to orange. Nope. Wait. We want the stroke to be black. And give me black stroke. No, no black stroke. Bear with me while I try to figure out why this isn't giving me a black stroke. There we go. There's white. And we want black. Perfect. And we would cycle through. Um, it's really nice on the, uh, the new Illustrator here that we have these samples right beside because, as I've said before, 90% of the time that I, uh, I do designing, I'm looking through fonts and trying to figure out which font is better. So having these as a quick like reference is way better than clicking through it one by one. Um, no. No, no, no. Let's use something simple. Something scary. Well, that's a scary font. Okay. Well, it's supposed to be like a fun um, music scene, so we could look at it like that. Just on speculation. But we have our title. Then below, we're probably going to put information. not always just going to type information, but it's going to be information regardless. Uh, click here, hold shift and alt, and you can shrink it and stay in the same spot. So if you already have it lined up for the sides here, which I still need to do, uh, you can keep it in the middle. We'll click on this guy too, hold shift, and center line, bump it over a bit. All right, those guys are in the center, we've got information hold alt and then press shift to uh, drag down again and these are going to be participants and or sponsors uh, it's always nice to set it up in the center too so whenever you type it moves out both sides evenly 
but we will take this guy, center him, bam, uh, shift and all. So we've got the title now, we've got the graphic, the information, the participants, and we can even put brought to you by like the, uh, the event holder which is, well, I'll just use in this case. That says DJ Sal, but you can't read it because it's a horrible font. Okay, so DJ Sal presents Halloween, Halloween Scream. We've got the pumpkin. We could even put something else in, uh, not necessarily wanting to use this gradient as a background, especially um, because it's distracting and it's, eh, it's flat. So we would look into maybe a solid color. Um, and, or I would look into a solid color. Sometimes you want to put in a border, but make sure when you do a border, don't put it past those uh, lines. And in general, it's all about uh, readability and presenting information to a viewer. So if you're doing an informational poster, make sure that it's like you're reading it and it's not confusing and uh, even get an uh, outside source to, or outside um, opinion on when somebody reads it and it's not confusing and they don't have to question it, they already have the information across and that's a good poster and I'd stick with that. But uh, I'm going to wrap it up now. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed uh, this tutorial from Tech Tyro. My name is Riley Miller. I'm the illustration specialist and if you have any questions on this, please feel free to ask. I hope I was informative enough and got the idea across. Um, but if there's anything else I can kind of work with you guys on, if there's questions or anything, I'd be more than happy to help out. Um, but yeah, from all of us at Tech Tyro, thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time. Um, comment below. Let me know what other kind of tutorials you guys would like to see.